We all know the feeling of trying to swat a fly out of the air as it buzzes annoyingly around our head. But flies are exceptionally skilled at avoiding our rapidly approaching hands. This is because flies fly with unparalleled speed and agility. Even when slowed down 300 times, they still look quite fast. In real time, their speed is even more impressive. But flies don't fly fast all the time. Their flight patterns consist of slower, smooth movements and rapid, ballistic turns called saccades. This makes them unpredictable and hard to hunt down. As one might imagine, vision is critical for flies to maintain stable flight when performing such rapid maneuvers. But flies cannot move their eyes in their socket as a human would because their eyes are rigidly fixed to their head. This means that flies rely heavily on head movements to enhance visual sensing during flight. Interestingly, head movements in flies also consist of slower, smooth movements and rapid shifts we call head saccades. This active vision pattern of slow, smooth movements and saccades is remarkably similar to eye movements in humans and other animals when tracking moving visual stimuli. Understanding what controls head movements in flies may reveal basic principles about active vision across many species in the animal kingdom. To study the control of head movements and head saccades in flies, we placed flies in a virtual reality flight simulator where we could precisely control their visual experience. Using computer vision, we tracked head and wing movements in response to various visual perturbations. We noted clear periods of smooth movements and saccades in both the head and wing responses. Notably, head saccades made up only 5% of total flight time, but had a considerable effect on head movement trajectories. Head saccades were strongly stereotyped and quite fast, reaching speeds over 600 degrees per second in as little as 50 milliseconds. Remarkably, virtually all head saccades were aimed away from the direction of visual motion, effectively resetting the position of the head. We noted that head saccades almost always started when the head was offset to one side of the neck and ended on the other side of the neck, almost always moving in the opposite direction of visual motion. For this reason, we refer to head saccades as head reset saccades. Because most biological joints have some degree of inherent elasticity, we were curious if head reset saccades might be influenced by these same properties at the neck joint. To test this idea, we displaced the head of anesthetized flies and let go. We found that the elasticity of the neck joint was large enough to generate rapid movements of the head which could help flies initiate head reset saccades. Much like fleas take advantage of the elasticity in their legs to jump long distances, flies exploit the elastic properties of their neck joint to aid in generating rapid head movements and saccades. By comparing the trajectories of the passively and actively generated head movements, we found that the elasticity of the neck joint accounts for nearly 65% of the velocity during head saccades. So what triggers head reset saccades? We noticed that when we presented flies with visual perturbations that did not drive the head to its anatomical limits, that flies rarely performed head reset saccades. However, when the visual perturbations were large enough to cause the head to reach larger excursions, flies performed reset saccades with much higher frequency. This data strongly supported the idea that head reset saccades are triggered not by visual information alone, but by proprioceptive feedback from the neck sensory system. We hypothesized that sensory hair fields at the base of the neck are involved in the trigger of head reset saccades. Specifically, that when the head excursion nears the anatomical limit of the neck joint, that these hairs would trigger a head reset saccade. To uncover the underlying mechanism triggering head reset saccades, we began to look at the coupling of head and wing movements in flies. We found that head and wing reset saccades were triggered near simultaneously, with the wings leading the head by 6 milliseconds. Therefore, if we were to evaluate the wing reset saccade rate in head fixed flies, it would presumably be lower than that of the saccade rate in head-free flies. 
we found that this was indeed the case, and head fixed flies performed less than half as many wing reset saccades as head free flies. To provide further evidence for the proprioceptive based saccade trigger, we glued a small iron filing to one side of the fly's neck. Then we measured the head reset saccade rate in these head constrained flies and their head free counterparts. Again, we found that the head reset saccade rate was significantly reduced in flies with their head constrained. This strongly suggests that head reset saccades are triggered primarily by proprioceptive feedback from the next sensory system. We also found that flies would rarely perform head reset saccades when extending their legs, which indicates that flies were attempting a landing maneuver. This data suggests that head movements are gated by behavioral state. This is clearly shown by comparing the head response as flies begin to extend their legs, highlighted in the red area. So what is the function of head reset saccades and how do they improve flight performance in flies? By analyzing the smooth head movements between saccades, we revealed that flies will reset their head via a head saccade prior to the head reaching its anatomical limit. This strategy enabled flies to stabilize gaze quasi-continuously, even though the head's range of motion is non-continuous. Without head reset saccades, this would be impossible because the head would simply get stuck at its anatomical limit and remain there. Altogether, our findings reveal the dynamics and control of head saccades in flies and uncover an active vision strategy that may have far-reaching implications in both biological vision and artificial vision systems.